Hello, and welcome edit. back. And what I would do with this button editor, you see this move? I'm going to move this to the upper left-hand corner. Then I'm going to click on black, and I'm going to make it one. There you go. So now you know that it's one decimal. It's going to be tough for me to make this italics. I'm not that creative. This is the extent of my creativity here, folks. So I'm going to hit, I use the, wrong, the other side of the brain, not the wrong side, but the other side of the brain. So what I'll do is I'll do that. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Close. Uh, don't hit Close yet. Stay in Tools Customize, and now you've got your pretty little icon there. What I need you to do now is as follows. After you have created your toolbar and your buttons, Excel doesn't know to load it. And these macros, the toolbar gets attached to the Excel application. But the macros themselves, the code, which you recorded, is stored in this file. It's not stored anywhere else. So therefore, if you were not to save this file, Excel has a toolbar with the pretty icons. But when you try to click on it later, it won't work because it can't find the file. So we need to do several things. First thing is this toolbar is associated and attached to Excel. We need to attach this toolbar to this file. So when you open the file, the toolbar will open. Then we need to save this in a location in which Excel will know to open this always. And therefore, it will always open and you can take this file, put it to another computer, put it in the same file location, and it'll, you'll always have it in every version of Excel that you're running on local computers. You can't save this, unfortunately, to a network drive to have it automatically install. You could, of course, upon boot, write a script, whatever. That's beyond the scope of this. But now what I want you to do is as follows. Go to the Toolbars tab again. You're still in the Tools Customize. If you got out, go back to Tools Customize. Click on Attach under the Toolbars tab. Custom Toolbars, Custom 1, click on Copy. Now you copy this toolbar into this workbook. Hit OK. Hit Close. And now I need you to do another thing. I do not want any of this data here in cell A and column A. So I'm going to just hit Control Space Bar, Control Minus, delete it. I don't want that number in here because I want this to be a regularly formatted, a regular file. Now, several more things we need to do. We need to save this in a location that Excel will know to open it every time. Here's what I'd like you to do. Please locate your Start menu on the bottom left or wherever you have your Start menu. Right-click, folks, that's taking your right mouse button and clicking. Right-click. Go to Explore. Not Explore all users. Go to Explore. Your Windows Explorer pops up. Your default directory that automatically pops, pop, that automatically pops up is C colon, document and settings, your username, administrator, in my case, start menu. I need you to find directly above start menu in the same hierarchy, application data. You should have somewhat gone through this when you installed our Wall Street Training add a macro toolbar. If you don't see application data, you need to go to tools, folder options, and then I need you to go to view and advanced settings where it says hidden files and folders, Please check so, or select Show Hidden Files and Folders. Hit OK. Now your application data should appear. When it does, click on it. Go to Microsoft. Go to Excel. Excel Start. Again, C colon Documents and Settings. Your username. Application Data, Microsoft, Excel, Excel Start. Different versions and older versions of Windows, you may not see this exactly. Please refer to our handouts. If you're in Excel 97 or, be, or before, this will be installed in a different location. Now, I want you to hit Alt-D to select the address. If you do not see your address toolbar up here, go to View Toolbars and make sure address is checked on. If it's checked off, you don't see it. So you can also right-click anyone toolbar and click on address. If the address toolbar is hidden, sometimes you may not see it. It may see something like this. If your toolbar is hidden, and you can't expand it, it's going to be difficult. So you want to go to View, Toolbars, make sure Lock the Toolbars is not checked. Now you can expand out, click and drag your address, so you see your full address. I need you to copy everything in this address, Control-C. Go back to your Excel, Alt-Tab, or just click on your Excel. I need to save this file, Book 2, in that location we just copied. That's the easiest way to do it. Hit F12, which is a save as. Control V in the file name to get to that directory. To check, you click on your folder hierarchy and there you go. File name, call it anything you want. I'm going to call it my toolbar file. 
hit save. Two more things we need to do, folks. Every time Excel loads, it will load up every file in that folder in that directory. We don't want Excel to be able to modify this file, but if you do, Excel will open this up every time you start typing, you're going to lose, you're not, you're not going to lose your macros, but you're basically going to be typing into this file. So I need you to do me a following favor. Go to the window toolbar and click on hide. You've now hidden your file, Excel will not automatically allow you to overwrite it or use that file as your template. Exit Excel altogether. It asks you, do you want to save? Yes, because the last thing you did after you did the first save, the last thing you did was to hide it. So click yes. Now, I want you to reload Excel. Reload Excel. And you still have your macros. I'm going to click and drag it up here. And then I'm going to click on new or control N and try this out. I'm going to type in point two. I'm going to go back to that point two and I'm going to click on my blue pen. It turned blue. I'm going to click on percent one, and I made a percent italic size, italics with the one decimal. Sweet. You're done creating your macros. What you would now do is create more macros. You just have to remember to reattach that toolbar because when you reattach it, that's how you're going to save all of those buttons. My suggestion to you is to create all your buttons first on your toolbar, make a list of everything you want, and then attach it, and then don't touch it afterwards because there's a lot of headaches that you're going to get in terms of losing your macros and whatnot. Let me show you how to delete this now. Two ways to delete it. First of all, if you go back to your folder, your My Toolbar file appears. Once you have finalized this file, you can take this and copy and paste it anywhere you want. Paste it back into the same folder of your other computers, and this will now load every time without a doubt. To delete this, first of all, you would delete the file. I'm not going to do it here, but you will first delete this file, exit Excel, so it's not using it, Delete the file or just move it outside of this Excel start folder. But when you do that and you reload Excel, your toolbar still appears. So you would go back. This is only if you want to delete it. You go back to customize on the toolbars, custom one or you, whatever you named it, you would just hit delete and then it's gone. So after you delete it, it's permanently gone. Don't just uncheck it. You have to do a full delete and go back to that folder and delete the file or move it outside this folder. And now you have totally erased all traces of your toolbars. Good luck and happy creating macros and buttons. See you next time. Take care.